<sighs> so it's time to go back on Periscope. Late night one for a change, usually I'm on much earlier, but I feel like I'm on now. Let's see if anybody's alive and awake and here. Hey, nice to have you here. Oops, change that around that perspective a little bit. <clears throat> wow, people joining in, they think there's a late night scope. Late night scopes? Well, relatively late night. It's what, 8.45 or so p.m. Pacific time. So late night for the East Coast. And probably, oops, I'm realizing that laptop is right in my face. Let me do this. That should be a bit better. And that should be better. Eh, kind of. <laughs> Reflection of the phone in my eyes. Hi, Dana. Nice to have you here. So, um, actually, I need more light in my face anyway. All right, now I've got glasses. Let's do it that way. <laughs> Trying out the glasses. See if I read your quotes. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my Periscope, late night scope. Um, I've been so busy today, I haven't a chance to do this, but I wanted to talk about this. Thank you. I was going to ask you to do that. Um, please invite your followers on Facebook. Sorry, well, Facebook too. Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, you know the, you know the drill. If you're not following me, please make sure you're following me. Um, yesterday hit some milestones, which is really cool. Um, actually hit my thousandth follower, actually about thousand four right now, and my five hundred thousandth heart, which is really cool. So today's scope is going to be juicy, may not be the right word. It might be painful for some people watching, especially on the replay, because this is going to be blunt. I call it Spiritual Sunday because Sunday's when I spend my time in my spiritual center and usually um, <laughs> discover stuff that isn't spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to say it's been an interesting day. Um, but this is, a bit, this is a combination of a couple of things I've been watching for the last couple of weeks, both in a um, discussion group, group I'm part of with two leaders and with a relationship paradigm I've been watching with a friend of mine and his ex. And this is happening both sides. And so I'll speak to what the issue is that you may be dealing with yourself, so bear with me. Having, I'm going to say this in a nice way, when you're attached to a position, now this could be, let me back up a second, first of all. Hi, my name is Barry Selby, if you don't really know me. I'm a relationship expert, number one best-selling author. I have a book, uh, sorry, I'm getting my props handy, uh, called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. That's out on Amazon, physical book, phys Kindle book, and, and digital book. So, hey, Tamara, good to see you here. Um, I wasn't sure who's going to be joining us, because this is a late night scope for me. Usually my scopes are late in the morning. So, um, sorry, I'm just going to make sure my props handy. Okay. So, yes, so my name is Barry Selby. I'm an author, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover is my book. It's a relationship, principles, 50 principles that help you for single, couples, men, women. And you can find out more about it on my website, which strange enough is barryselby.com slash book. Well, thanks for stopping by saying hi at least. I appreciate that. Um, but I want to speak something that maybe you can use with your, with your teens, by the way, because this is a powerful principle. If they get it now, they'll be so far ahead of the game. So let me speak to it right now. So, um, nice to be here. Thanks for being here. So, I mentioned the title of the word projection. And I'll explain what, you, what I mean and where you may be experiencing this in your life and how to resolve it. Because projections suck. They suck the life energy out of people. And frankly, they suck because they separate people. They take them away from loving, from uh, caring, or from understanding each other. Because what they do is put walls between people. So let me give you context for this. And it's something I've learned and keep learning because I'm not an expert on this stuff at times. I feel like I'm a beginner because stuff happens in life. In one instance, there were, there, there's a, a, um, a group I meet with once every few months. I'm not going to give any names out to keep it confidential. But the two leaders of that group, facility, I'm a participant, not a leader in the group. Two of the participants in the group, sorry, the two leaders, man and woman, have different perspectives on life. And in particular, even though they're co-facilitating and they're co-leading the group, they've taken opposite positions on a situation. And the truth, sorry, the, the experience is that both of them have different perspectives on what happened because they do different perspectives. It's Angel of Lace, haven't seen you for a while. I said, you're my scope. I'm attempting to try and explain this as I go along and, and hopefully it's going to come down articulately, not just like a brain dump in your lap. Because this is a powerful piece. And if I try to explain it, I'll give you the examples first and then I'll explain what I mean and hopefully it'll get valid for you. First of all, and by the way, thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining your for inviting your followers on Periscope and on Twitter. And if you're not already following me, please make sure you do swipe right on the iPhone up on the Droid and tap follow me. Um, I've now succeeded, awesome, uh, yesterday, it's getting over a thousand followers now and about 500,000 hearts. So I welcome more hearts, of course, and I do welcome more followers. And, but my, my main thing is one, I want you to get value out of what I share. Okay, that's kind of my agreement with Periscope myself is when I talk to you. Hi, nice to be here. 
when I when I give you stuff, ideally you can take something into your life and use it and improve your life. That's kind of my mission, my message, and my motivation for doing periscopes every day. So that's one reason you want to follow me because I do do periscope broadcasts every day, usually around the middle of the day. But today I just had no time. Um, well, I should say no time to sit and clear my head, and I barely have that now. But I want to get this out before it's too late. It's already almost nine o'clock at night, and it's been a long day. So back to the story context. Man and woman leading this group that I'm part of had different perspectives and I'm trying to see how much I can tell you without giving away too much because I want to keep it respectful of the space. Basically they are antagonistic to each other because one of them shares something the other person heard differently than they heard it. That's one piece by the way. That's one of the things about listening not hearing. And it created a discord. Actually no, it created a, a, a rift between them. And what's happening is the group is now falling apart because of this, because it's polarizing the group behind one or the other. The bottom line is that each of them are projecting their upset on the other person. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So hold that thought, I'll come back to it. In another instance, and this is more, more black and white, so you'll see it more clearly, I trust. Um, one of my friends slash clients is going through a breakup with somebody. And the challenge is, is that the other person is calling my friend. Well, they're both friends of mine, actually. My friend is called, one friend's calling the other, one's calling the other person a liar and bullshit stuff and all these other things when they're doing exactly the same thing themselves. That's the projection. Projection in its simplest form, so you know what I mean by projection, it's a psychological term, and I studied this in my master's program, is basically judging somebody else for something that you're already doing, and I'll get to the positive negative piece in a moment, or judging somebody else for something you think you would do, or judging somebody else for something you could be possible, capable of doing if you never do it. For example, and this is the extreme one, well, no, and it's not the simpler ones, so I'll get the extreme ones later on because I don't want to give you too much to take on tonight. First of all, when you judge somebody else for, um, it's something I've been learning and I'm still learning because it's, it's an ever ever evolving experience, and that's the spiritual part. This is part of the journey of being human and raising your level of vibration and raising your ability to function. Projection is the um, projecting of your own judgments of yourself onto other people. That's the simplest way of putting it. And it's dangerous. If you're in a relationship and you do this, you're creating a separation and you're shutting down your heart and your partner's heart. It doesn't help the relationship. So if you're doing this, stop it. But <laughs> I'll get to how in a moment. But that's the simplest answer. When you're doing this in business, you're separating yourself from your clients, from your coworkers, from your boss or employees. It doesn't create intimacy. It doesn't create connection. It doesn't create respect. So projection as a, um, exactly, it's your own interpretations at work. And it is, that's the dangerous part of this. Because what you do is you're overlaying other people's behaviors and words and communications with your own filters. And I mentioned earlier about listening versus hearing. We have this tendency to take what somebody says through our own filters, because that's how we're built, and interpret stuff how we think it should come through, not what they're actually saying. So if you're in a place where you hear something and you're like, what did they say? Ask them, what did you say? Or better yet, ask them, say to them, what I thought I heard you say was this. Is that accurate? First of all, if you do that, you clear up any doubt and you don't jump into assumptions, which is another part of this whole projection piece. Secondly is they'll understand that you want to understand them and that brings you closer. Powerful talk, that's actually a bonus talk. Back to the projection piece, because I'm dancing around, so I'm realizing I'm, I'm intending to give you the whole thing, but it's not coming out in linear fashion, so bear with me. Projection though, as a dysfunction, because well, let, me, let me take a sidebar and come back to it. Projection is a negative and a positive. How do I mean? When you judge somebody as being a really bad person or a liar or a cheat or whatever it is, if you're judging them harshly, it's likely that you have that feeling or belief about yourself somewhere inside. That's negative projection. Positive projection is the same thing the other way, meaning that if you judge someone out there as more beautiful than you are, more physically fit than you are, more attractive than you are, more successful than you are, you're positively projecting onto them what you wish you had or that you don't believe about yourself to have. So projection works both ways, but I'm speaking more about the negative side of things because truth with projection is, and the positive side is a different story and you can work with it a whole different way. But negative projection is resentment and judgment. Neither one help your health. 
physically it will kill you. And I mean this this way. There's a, um, a way of spit, talking about resentment, because that's what it is. When you're judging somebody else, you're resenting them about something they've done, said, or, or behaving like. When you are judging them, you're separating yourself from them first. Second thing is, thank you for the hearts, I appreciate it. Second thing is, you are also um, having resentment, which is separation from them. And what resentment is, basically, is the same thing, toxically, toxic, toxically speaking, I would say that, how it affects your body. Thank you. Okay, well, I appreciate you telling me that, and I'm glad you can then be coming back. Sorry, I'm just seeing this. Oh, okay, yes. I see it was for a second. I, I, I took my glasses off so I wouldn't get the screen reflection in my uh, in the in the thing because when I put my glasses on, I'm getting all this reflection stuff, which is making it hard. <laughs> That's why I'm not wearing glasses. Um, <laughs> sorry. Ah! The the dance of this with projection, sorry, resentment. Toxically speaking to your body, if you're judging somebody else and resenting them, you're impacting yourself negatively, physically. You'll get sick from doing it. The way I've heard it said, and I believe it's true, resentment is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. That's graphic. Because when you're resenting somebody and you're judging somebody, around 15 years, sleep with 179 prostitutes, no joke, what the hell is wrong with me? Um, well, if that's what you've been doing, you need to get help. That's what you need. That's a, that's a very big question for a simple answer, but the truth is, if that's something you've actually done and it's real, get help. Resentment is something that you do toxically to yourself. What happens is when you resent because if you resent somebody, nine times out of ten, they don't know you're doing it. It doesn't affect them. They're going about life and whistling away, having a great time. Meanwhile, you are just eating away your system inside. Cancer comes from anger, by the way. In some kinds of cancer, it can be instigated by your emotional state. Now, I'm not a medical person to tell you this, but I would tell you that people, a lot of people who have had cancer have repressed anger in their history. And if you do research, you'll find out there's studies on this stuff. So being resentful of other people, being angry at other people, being judgmental of other people, the common thing is you're doing it. The other person likely, unless you tell them, which is rare, doesn't even know about it. So if you are projecting on somebody else, catch yourself. So I've not been to marriage counseling. Where do I go from here for more help? Um, probably go to some sort of sexual healing type focus if that's what you're doing, sexually speaking. So that's not my area of expertise, so I can't really help you with that. Because um, you have a different sort of challenge than I can handle or help you with. Okay? Um, back on track. So resentment is a... I say it's a trap but it's a warning sign. If you are in resent, if you're in projection of somebody else negatively, you're judging them for something they're doing or not doing, you're absolute, actually what you're doing is holding yourself back from being the best you can be, first of all. You're separating from yourself from other people, which is the second piece. And you're also attempting, unsuccessfully, attempting to make the other person wrong, which isn't gonna happen. Because what's happening, truthfully, is you are, um, Pretending something is true when it's not. That's the truth of the matter. So projection is not a fun piece. I can't go into too much detail in the scope because it's something I really got to speak in another format. Um, I had a piece to talk about earlier that is not in my not aware of, in my awareness right now to speak about, so I'm going to leave this in that one. Um, but I want to speak to also. Um, this is the piece I want to talk about. Sorry, I was waiting for it to come in. It was like yeah, there's somewhere. It's like okay, come through. I mentioned about relationship couple I know and one of them is to call the other person a liar when they're lying themselves. It's so tempting to pretend not to know things about ourselves. And one of my favorite quotes from a training was in many, many years ago. Well, it's, it's a double one. One is how, how is, what would you do if you couldn't, how, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And what are you pretending not to know? If you ask those questions to yourself and wait for the answer, don't jump to the answer, but what if you ask those questions, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And what are you pretending not to know? Those two questions will shift you. If you're in a place where you're judging somebody else or in projection with somebody else and you're catching it, which is good, ask yourself those questions. Particularly the second one. If you're judging somebody else for something, 
what am I pretending not to know? Like if I'm judging that person for being a liar, what am I pretending not to know? Perhaps what I'm pretending not to know is that I'm lying to myself. I'm withholding the truth from other people or whatever that is. So use it as a reference point. Use it as a signpost for yourself. Use it as a red flag to go, hang on a second, what am I doing? What's triggering that in me to judge them? Now, this is advanced stuff for a lot of people I know. Most people watching the scope, well, not say watching the scope, but most people in the world have no clue about this stuff. If you're getting this, props to you, because that's huge. I've studied this for quite a few years, so I'm, I'm still developing my mastery of it, but it's not an easy journey. Um, it is a bit advanced, I understand. But if you get this, if you get this, it will change your life. So I'm going to leave it like that. If you have any questions, please do, relevant to this topic, please. Not 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 adjunctual, not uh, uh, tangential questions, because some of the questions, the early ones don't really fit. But if you have questions about this, please ask them, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, because I think I've got my point across to the best I can do right now, unless you have questions to clarify or something else you need. So, got it. Okay. I appreciate that. That's Iris. Iris, nice. thanks for joining, by the way. I had to look at the profiles because, as I said, I'm not wearing my glasses because of the screen reflection. Because if I do this... Oh, well, if I look down... No. Yeah, it's looking like that, so... I understand trying to adjust what I'm talking about. You might want to replay. And if you want another option you can do, um, I'm trying to think of any books I know off the top of my head that are good for this. I would say do a web search, Google search, for um, psychology and projection. You should be able to find things that way. They'll give you explanations. It'll be made clinical. But um, you're welcome. Glad I could help you, Mr. Havisham. It is, uh, it's, this is something that really was on my plate today. It was on my conversation because I had him and one in conversation today and two of the last few days watching other people and I had to say it today. It doesn't fit my daily scopes. Um, often when you don't like what other people, others is often a reflection of yourself. I think this applies. Um, yes. Well, it's not always a reflection necessarily directly. What it is, is it can be something where you believe it's possible about yourself. So you're judging either you've done it, you're judging that you might do it, or you're judging it's possible you could do it. So it's one of those three usually. All right, so if that helps. Um, yeah, this is a big one, and not something I was planning on do tonight because it's going to be a spiritual Sunday, light and frothy. Well, no, <laughs> this is spiritual work too. This is deeper spiritual work. And I don't mean like woo woo stuff or praise God type stuff. This is spiritual in the sense of do your homework, do your own work, so you don't judge other people, so you love more. Because that to me is spiritual. Um, I'll be back on tomorrow. Uh, Mondays is Man Up Mondays, so I'll be talking about the masculine and male stuff. Always being jealous. Um, can be that also is a lot. Of, that's also something about self trust. Um, being jealous, frankly, is often because you don't trust for some reason. It could also be hi, Brookie, um, or it could be because you have been distrusted before. I'll be sorry, been um, distrustful before, and maybe lied to as well. So, it's possible not to judge. Um, <laughs> You ask a deep question. <laughs> the truth is that we are we are created into a, what's known as a negative world. So being positive in this world is work. Um, if you ever read any books by um, David Hawkins, uh, he wrote Power versus Force. And he talks about this whole thing about positive and negative energy, negative energies. In this um, conversation about judgment, it is possible not to judge, but out of seven and a half billion people. I would say maybe a thousand people can do it worldwide. And most of them are monks who don't spend time in society because it's easy to not judge if you live in a cave as a hermit. But you try walking out of the cave down in society and then you then you start seeing if you can judge or not. I've been doing this work for 30 years, so different stuff. I still judge because it's part of the journey. The thing though, the thing you do is you do this work more and more is you catch yourself quicker. Right. But we're humans at 40. Well, Okay, let me rephrase what you're saying there. So, Robert, you said, but we're humans and faulty. I try, but always seem to ruin things. Don't say that that's not true. Because always is assuming that every single time you're going to fail. I don't believe so. If you can if you can walk along the street, you can get up and walk around, you can breathe, you've succeeded. So you don't always fail. So watch your language. Yeah, watch your language. But that's that's a part of the piece. This is this is an LP stuff I'm talking about, is, is the global assumptions. Like, it always happens this way, or it never happens. Well... Is that accurate? You can ask yourself these questions. Because if you ask the question honestly, 
and say, well, maybe not. I hope they help you again. Sorry, thank you. I mean, rather, I'm hoping they help you because these are, these are subtle linguistics, but massive changes in your life. It's kind of the work I do with my clients. Um, I was going to do a promo, but I'm not feeling the energy to promo tonight. Just go look at my website. Let's do this bit this way. That's my website, barryselby.com. I have a bunch of, I have a, a free video series for mostly the single ladies, but guys can watch it too because it's the information for both genders. Uh, my book is on the site. I have three, I have two online programs for women on, the, on my site and private coaching. So just go to barryselby.com, check out my stuff. That's, that's the promo. <laughs> I'm not feeling the urge to sell you stuff tonight because it's not appropriate. Um, by the way, that stuff and protection is not in my book. That's what I was trying to say. Even though I got my book on 50 principles, I don't mention projection in my book um, because that's a whole different conversation and it's a bit bigger than what's in my book. So I just want to say that piece because that's something that um, it's a deeper topic, to say the least. Um, you judge harshly your ex husband for cheating and lying, but now I have great, now you forgave him. That's good. Because again, judging him, it can feel right to judge because of what he did, but it doesn't serve you long term. So forgiving him was a wise move. Because that's going to free your heart and free you to love again. So powerful work. So thank you. I'm glad you did that. So props, props to you, as that say. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking. Is any questions? Because I, I think that was really what I was going to cover. There was, I did answer and took a tangent again, which happens on Periscope. I hope this helps you. Um, this week I'll be back on Periscope every day as usual. Uh, Mondays is Man Up Mondays. Tuesday is. Um, True Love Tuesdays, I think. I've remember I've renamed it a couple of times. Wednesday's Woman Up Wednesday. Thursday is Thankful Thursdays. Friday's Free Form Fridays. Saturday is Straight Talk Saturdays. And Sunday Spiritual Sundays. That's the plan. You try to be empath empathic when others do you wrong. Sometimes, though, when others do you wrong, that's an indication for you to walk away. That's by this whole other piece of the conversation. Just because somebody doesn't treat you well doesn't mean you have to put up with it. It doesn't mean you argue with them. Something that means you need to walk away in a relationship, in business, in life, in family. Sometimes it takes courage to say, you know what? I don't want to sit here and listen to this. I need to take care of myself and have the courage to walk away. As much as you may be losing out, we think you're losing out, it's important. You've cheated you so gratefully, your wife is an amazing person. So basically you're saying that she forgave you and that she's accepted you back. So you have a calling, sir, to step up your game and honor her every day I would say that yeah so you have, a, you have an amazing woman yes but also that means that you need to step up as well to her to respect and appreciate her every day however she needs to hear it feel it sense it that's great all right this is great get sad that he continues to lie and I feel hurt that about the country control that well see that's the thing oh she's a queen absolutely yes take care of that lady um, yes and, and you made a mistake and she forgave you, that's big. That also means you've got to be accommodating to her. Not that she has the right to, but be appreciative of who she is and understand where she makes her any errors on her part. Because she's human too. But she's made an amazing gesture to reach out. Um, I respect to you. You're talking about um, your husband lying. If you're still, you, I, you, I think you did, did I hear or did I intend, in, in a sense you divorced him? I'm not sure if I caught that or not. If you did, um, then frankly, as best you can, disown him from you, in your mind from your business so you can separate yourself from him because whatever he's still doing isn't part of you now it's not your life you're free to move on I trust and that's where your focus ideally will be is support yourself and take care of yourself and not be caught up like a divorce right so um, it's uh, I'm giving you right simple answers but truth is if you want to go deep in this I can help you this is my work uh, feel free to reach out to my website again barryselby.com I've got coaching and stuff on there. Um, I love helping my clients heal this stuff so they don't carry on the baggage anymore. Because most of us are carrying big suitcases over our shoulders of baggage into our next relationships from stuff we had in the past. Whether it's divorce or dating, whatever relationship it is. you know, Divorce isn't the worst thing, no. Sometimes divorce is the best thing, but not always. It's, it's a case-by-case -case basis. So, Robert, I just want to say, divorce isn't the worst thing. In some cases, I've actually seen situations where divorce is the best thing that can happen for couples that were never meant to be together in the first place. Some of the divorce court systems are really messed up. That's a whole other conversation about the way the lawyers and the judges work. But if it can be done through a, um, a mediator versus a, a, a divorce attorney, it can be healthier, cleaner, and a lot more cost-effective. 
but that's that's the extent of my legal advice because I'm not, not, a, not a lawyer or anything like that but I have friends of mine who do that work um, so Iris if that's a question for you and you want to talk more reach out to me on my website there's a link for a discovery session we can talk as a gift to you and give as a gift to you um, but if you want to just do the work I've given on the scope please do that take this to heart um, it's not an easy topic to play with and I just I just find to get out of my head onto the into the scope so thank you um, yeah so the process is horrible but you're glad you're not living in chaos that's beautiful how do you put <laughs> how do you put this into a long-term relationship in three words or less oh you bring up the challenges are you now okay um how can you put an excitement relationship in three words or less well <laughs> you want two words love more there's two words for you and what i mean to give you more than three words just so you have that you're welcome iris Hi there, good to hear. Sorry, I'm just watching all the comments dashing past. Um, in terms of put excitement back into your life, is you need to go out and date your wife. You need to actually go out and date like your first couple got together. Because you may have got into a, a regular comfort zone. Um, okay, I'll tell you this. In my book, chapter 10, <laughs> since you asked the question, talks about romance. And, it's the, and I'll explain what it is so you don't need to go to my book for this. Uh, I mean, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm English, but I live in Los Angeles. So I'm in the USA, West Coast. That's why it's not past midnight. It's like 9.15 here. Um, what is this about? You have to go back to the replay. I'm just wrapping up now. Oh, so you two. Hey, you two. How are you doing? I had a feeling because I saw you scoping earlier. Yeah, Angel and Brent. Good over here. Um, it's a book. I saw across the sky. <laughs> I am a number one best-selling author of 50 Ways to Love Your Love. It's on Amazon and it's on my website. If you go to barryselby.com slash book, um, that's that's where you find the book. It's an ebook format, it's a digital download, it's 10 bucks to get it quick and easy, or you can get the book physical form. No, it's 50 principles for healthy relationships. There's a conversation about how to have better sex, but not 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 um X rated stuff. It's pretty much G rated, really. Anyway, yes, barrysober.com. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, so chapter 10 to answer your question earlier about putting passion back in sex, uh, attraction back in your relationship. If I got that right. 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, my book, chapter 10, which is the principle number 10, about how to put more romance in your relationship. And I literally, in the chapter, am so simplistic. Absolutely, I'm trying to remember the thoughts as I get distracted. Um, so I'm seeing your, is that Bo? Bo, okay, I'm gonna get your name so I can say it to you. So Bo, this is the simple way to do it. Now I'll just tell you what's in the chapters, you do it yourself. Go online and do a web search for romance, how to. They're literally three words. Romance, how to. You'll get probably 700 million ideas, thoughts, and things about relationships. And through that, you'll find it won't be every single one of them. But I found, I, I downloaded a bunch myself and made an ebook out of it, which I give to my audience at certain times called Adventures in Romance. But it's basically 150 or so different romantic ideas to put spark back in your relationship. Now, it's good for first dates and for hundredth dates. And you can just do that yourself. So I'm just saying, just go online, do a web search for romance, how to. There's the obvious ones about flowers and dinner and stuff like that, which are the boring ones. Well, after the first few times, they're boring. But there's some things like, you know, go biking together, go away on a trip together, um, have a picnic on a boat in the lake or something. Because sex doesn't start in the bedroom. It starts this for a moment you think about it. So if you get romantic, get intimate with your, your partner through phone calls, texting, not sexting, texting, you can do the sexting subtly through doing things that are evocative because foreplay can go forever the boys are, the guys are going what forever women are like thank you um <laughs> sorry that was a that was a running mistake in my head um but if you do that you'll have more spark to your relationship so i hope they'll help you okay that's kind of what i want to speak to is that it's a simple thing it sounds like but if you start doing new things and different things about your relationship it will re reawaken the spark in your love life. You said it's seven plus years, so you definitely it's time. You know, the seven, the seven year itch type stuff. There's, there's a cycle, of, it's like we go through cycles every seven years. So it's, it's a perfect time now to look at that as things you do. Some it's free, some it's cheap. If you do, I mean, in terms of you go look on the web, they get all this list. Some of the things won't cost you any money, like, you know, go for a walk on the beach or bring a, you know, drop flowers at our office or something like that. Lots of little things you can do that can add the spark back into your love life. So, and the good thing is, is once you start doing it, you can inspire each other, not just one way. 
so you can both do it. So I hope that helps you. That's the say it's one of the chapters in my book, but I'm just telling you what the chapter says because it's really the silliest chapter in the book, personally. It's like, oh, how to be romantic? Go online, do a web search. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's that easy. So, all right, any other questions? Because this, is, this has gone off topic, which is fine, but I want, I want to make sure I get any other questions answered that are on the scope before I sign off for the night. Um, I did plan a late night scope, but that's what happened. Um, Ira, is he still on here? Because you asked if I was in the USA. Right, thank you. I have been taking relationship questions. Yes, feel free to throw one at me. So, um, whoops. That was Crystal, there you are. Yeah, Crystal. So feel free to post one, yeah. And Iris, if you're still here, um, let me know where you are, because you asked if I was in the USA, so I just want to check if there was a correlating time zone. And Crystal, if you want to ask your message, go ahead. Um, ask your question, go right ahead. This was, it's become an open question place, yes. It started off with the topic, which I delivered. Now just Q&A stuff. On a bus from New York to Chicago. <laughs> you are? Wow. So you're doing a late night scope, huh? I'm glad you're watching. A nice tech dancer, that's cool. And probably pretty cold where you are right now. I don't know. I know New York was pretty nice. So what if your significant other what if your significant other needs to deal with a fairly important issue in their own life, but Okay, but <laughs> Let's wait for the rest of the question. Never seems to make it a priority. Oh, so they're avoiding taking responsibility for something? Iris, you're back. Um you asked me if I was in the USA, and I said I was. When the West Coast, where are you at, by the way? Okay, so he, you was a mate, your partner, he's not, because he is not dealing with something that's an issue in his life. Is he ignoring it, or just not willing to take it on right now? Oh, your phone froze, that sucks. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got back on again. Um, so, Crystal, is it something he's totally ignoring, or something that he's just not willing to do? There's two different things. Unfortunately, Periscope makes it slow. Each time I bring it up, he gets angry. Oh, so he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm, I'm presuming. Why is it important to you? Whatever this thing is, why is it important to you that he does it? It's the thing I have to pause now because it takes like about 30 seconds for the questions to get back typed in. Go spread Australia's his finances, okay then that's where you've got to come from. Not to nag him, okay, let, let, let me give you a perspective on how to bring it to you, because I'm, I'm getting more sense of what you're asking for now. There's something that he's not taking care of that's causing a strain on your finances, I get that. I'm guessing that you probably have been somewhat demanding of him, or at least begging him to do something about it. If that's if it is the case or not the case, a different way you can probably do it, an opportunity to do it with him. Because it's a, you share the finances, from what you said in your in your comment if that's the case it does affect both of you um you try to help him be supportive sorry rob i'm ignoring you. i'm just trying to reach to crystals first i'll come back to you rob in a second i try to help him be supportive right well the thing about it is you've got to enroll him in in collaboration because if it's something he's doing that's affecting your your collaborative finances best thing you can do ideal thing you can do is to um he never seems to take initiative. It, is he feeling ashamed about it, perhaps? Because he's not saying ashamed, he may be trying to avoid it simply because he doesn't feel comfortable about it, or he feels like he's somehow like guilty and he's hiding it from you. Right. So, well said, thank you. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, you have to get his buy in so he has to see the benefit and wants to change. Yes, and um, Crystal, with your husband, your sort of boyfriend. I'm not sure you said it, but I didn't ask. I don't think I saw which one it was. Enrolling him is good. And speak. it needs to be taken care of for the three years we've been together. So he has a, he has something to take care of financially. Is it something you can do fairly easily? That's good. I didn't ask the question about how able is he to take care of it. Is it going to be a big piece of work or is it something you can do fairly easily, you think? Because if it's something easy, it may just be the emotional baggage. If it's harder, it's a different story. If it's physical, is this something you expected to be fixed before you saying yes? Interesting question, Bo. So let Chris to respond to my question first, then I can get to a closer answer. I'm just waiting for the, 
waiting for the money that comes to proper. The process is simple; it just needs to be done. He legally can't say yes until he does. Oh, this is an this is a previous marriage type thing. Okay. So perhaps he is unwilling to commit to you, which is what's stopping him. He's it's not so much about doing that, as much as he's already he's still um, he's got reservations on different topics. So my suggestion, if this is the case, I think I'm constructing this correctly. If this is the case. I invite you to ask and have a conversation with him, maybe with a third party. It may be, you know, your, your minister or something else you trust to ask what he's looking for with you. Is he really looking for a long-term relationship and marriage? Because if he is, that hurdle needs to be taken care of. And as a given, I presume. If that's not the case, then you may be looking at a different choice about where you want to go. Does that make sense, Crystal? I don't want to give him an ultimatum, but I don't know what else to do. Well, the problem is he's he's not giving you what you want. And you're feeling ultimatum. Your your time is not so much your clock is ticking, but you invested three, you said it's been three years. So your choices are to either go along with what he's go along with what he's doing now, which isn't helping you, to risk a breakup by saying, I want to change this, or by seeking to get clarity. And if you get clarity first, what to recommend to understand where he's coming from. Is he in it for the long term with you? Is he feeling, is he perhaps putting off that financial piece to avoid the, the conversation, to avoid the decision about long term with you? Because maybe he's comfortable maintaining where it is and he won't take it up to here, but he won't do it. So it's good for you to know that first because that's a piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it's a long time. So I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you as much direct answer as I can, unfortunately. Hope this will help. I know getting impatient. Well, three years is a fair bit of time. You know, like clock's ticking. Life is happening. So, you know, I, I, what can I say? If you know what you want, and if he's providing it for you, and he's willing to commit, then great. If any pieces have, have alignment, he's got to shift or you've got to shift. Whichever direction that is. I would tell you what he is, but you've already helped. Certainly. Um... So, Crystal, if you want my help, you can reach out to me um, through my website and I can talk to you offline as well. Can you tell me about me? Can I tell you about me? Um, well, I'm, I'm not married. <laughs> this is the interesting thing. People say, well, how can you be a relationship coach you not been married? Well, I've been studying stuff for a long time. I've had more than enough dysfunctional relationships. You're welcome, Crystal. Um, what's the normal dating period? There isn't one. I'm sorry. There are so many standards and numbers Right, not married. Go figure. Yeah, I wrote a book and I'm not married. How can I do that? Um, I've been a very, very keen observer of relationships and I've studied, I've got a background in psychology and spirituality. I've studied stuff for 30 years and I've been avoiding, not as so much of what, uh, interesting I said that. I've been out of relationship a lot because I've been observing a lot, studying a lot and reading a lot. And right now I'm building my business and I learned from one of my teachers that for me as a man, my purpose, which I now know is out there, comes before my relationship. As in, I can't have a healthy one till I get this sorted out. So I'm building this now, and she's coming soon. So anyway, that's that's a that's a that's a very short statement about my whole perspective. Um, I've said another scopes is probably why I'm not saying it, saying it now. Um, you resent your husband for things I dislike about myself. Disorganization, quick to anger. That's the projection piece I talked about earlier. Go back and watch from the beginning. So. To do social relationships, you're not able to have one? No, that's not, that's not actually the case. Um, actually, I have chosen not to be in one because I don't feel I'm in a place to honor and respect and appreciate the woman I want to be with until my work is clear. The big wake up call for me, just so you give you this piece. I've had a few careers in my life, <laughs> quite a few. And every relationship I was in, I would walk away from my life and being, right, it's part of the journey. I'm not perfect at this by any means. Nobody who is a good relationship coach, relationship coach is. Anybody who says they are isn't a good relationship coach. Ever any coach, period, who says they're perfect. No, they shouldn't be doing it. We're all learning. A good coach is always studying and I'm learning. We all are. Um, I, was, I would give up my focus on work to, to be in a relationship, which is dysfunctional for my partner and for myself. I didn't know I was doing that until I had a big wake-up call about six, seven years ago, thanks to some great teachers that showed me what I was doing, what I needed to do, do differently. So once I got clear about 
finding out why I was here for my work, my mission. Now I'm focusing on that and getting it to a place where it's stable, functional, and effective. Then I can have a healthy relationship because I won't be putting the energy in the wrong spaces. Um, that's from one of my teachers, David Data, in uh, The Way of the Superior Man, Chapter 7. I've memorized this chapter, Tating. Um, he says that man's purpose comes before his relationship. So, oh, you've never told anybody but your mum about anything with your boyfriend. I already feel a bit better. Crystal, I'm glad I could help. This is what I keep telling people about Periscope, by the way. It's a total sidebar. Periscope is an amazing vehicle for connection, communication, and authenticity. And the ability to send teachings and information and guidance to people out, out there in, in Periscope land who get value, it, it blows my mind that something this simple as a tool like this can be this valuable as a resource. So I'm glad I could help Crystal and, and however I can support you, let me know. Yeah, it is like truly life changing. It's a game changer, as I said, for 2016, and it is a life changing too. So, yeah, it's an interesting place. And to, and to be honest, actually, Blab is another one I like, and I haven't gotten that much yet. But I need to get the Blab further down the road because that's the ability to do live dialogue back and forward through video. It's like Skype, but you can have up to four people can be in it. So, that's coming for me. I'm not doing it yet. I'm, other people are doing Blab, I'm not. I'm still very focused on Periscope. But Blab is good. <clears throat> I've been on a few black conversations, but I haven't run any myself. I will do some soon. That's definitely on the cards for 2016. So, um, I think that's, that's about it. I'm wrapping up, unless you have any questions or any further questions for me before I sign off. Um, I appreciate you being here, and thanks for the questions and keeping me definitely on my edge. Do I have any merit like degrees? I have a master's degree in spiritual psychology. I have a, spirit, a visual license as a spiritual um, licensed practitioner from my spiritual center, 15 years worth of that. Um, I've got 30 years of study, different teachings and trainings. Yes, I have had careers before this. Um, a few of the ones I've done, I was in the printing industry as a pre-press manager, go figure. Most of my careers were computer related because that's what I was doing. No, I appreciate that. And it's, I know some people like to see what your, bat, what your credentials to go with your, with your, uh, um, your shingle you hang out. And for me, basically, um, recommend any good books to strengthen marriages, uh, yes. Good books to recommend for marriages. No, I never dealt blackjack. Um, yeah, I was in programming mainframes back in the old days. Um, for marriages, yeah, my, thank, thank you, Crystal. Um, yes, my book worked really well. 50 Ways to Love Your Love Will Help. I keep thinking of other people. And you get and go here, barrysilvey.com slash book. Find out all about my book there. It's, in, it's an ebook, physical book, and Kindle. Um, audio books coming this year. Other books I would recommend added to that, and I actually mentioned them in my book. In the back of my book, I recommend a couple of books, and one recommend as well, um, by Gay and, K Gay and Katie Hendricks, husband and wife, out of, Santa, out of uh, Ojai now. They're some of the, my teachers. And one of their books was called the Con the Conscious was called Conscious Loving. It's now been renamed as The Conscious Heart, I believe, but either one is good. Very good book about breaking the cycle of codependence and having a really close, harmonious, and honest relationship. That's a good book as well. Um, if you are having challenges with how you love each other, then recommend uh, The Five Love, Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. It's a very good book for understanding how you may be seeing and experiencing love differently than your partner and how you can f find a way to match and meet. Very useful, very, actually it's a simple book in a way, but very useful. So that's three books, my book, Conscious Loving, and Five Love Languages. How's that for starters? <laughs> Hope that helps. Um, you're welcome. Well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that, Crystal. Uh, that's one reason I got to do my audiobook. I've got some friends of mine who are begging me to do my book in audio format so they can listen to my voice. I have to serve. I have to serve. <laughs> Back to voice. Thank you. That's cute, Crystal. Yeah, check this out. I recommend it. And again, um, Conscious Loving is in my book. I recommend it. And I, I need to update my book because this is a, it's actually so published I can edit it anytime I want. And I need to put the five love languages in my book. I've talked about it so many times, but never, it didn't put it in my book yet. So... I need to. So uh, that's it. I think I think we can wrap up now because I think we've got to a good point, a break point. Thank you for watching the scope. And if you have just joined late, please go back and watch it from the beginning. I did cover the deep stuff at the beginning, deeper than I planned, but hopefully it gave you some value you can take into your life and love and live more sexless, more joyfully, more successfully, more effectively. You totally see me vo voicing over an alarm or a GPS. <laughs> Cute crystal. Cute, very cute indeed. So, yeah.
Well, I'm glad I could help. You're welcome. Um, oh, Iris, you're back. Did you, fall, did you do your phone freeze again? You're welcome. Yeah, not, I don't, I'm not a real doctor. I don't play one on TV. I'm just known as the love doctor to my friend. So it's a soft title, just so you know. Um, Crystal, if you just came back in, I did ask you earlier. You may have dropped out when I was calling in. Um, you in the States as well? I'm in Los Angeles, California. That's where I am. Uh, West Coast. Even though I'm English originally, that's why I have that sign. Funny accent. But I've been here for 30 years. Plus 30 years. So, so Crystal, where are you, by the way? Because you asked me if I was in the States. Sorry, no, Crystal. Iris. That was who I was asking. West Virginia. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? You're on West Coast too, California. Cool. And Iris, you were asking me, so I'm going to ask you back. What, what part of the country? I presume you're in the United States. What part of the United States are you in? If you are in the United States, of course, I could be wrong. Massachusetts. Okay, East Coast. It's only three hours difference. And Columbus, Ohio. We've got a nice like, range of American people. I say Americans because when I read my scopes during the day, I get a lot of the Brits on because I'm part of a couple of, actually, three different periscope groups that are largely based in the UK. So it's nice to have, well, a late night talk for the, for the Americans. Keep it quiet. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sign off now. I think I'm done for the night. Uh, I've got to send an email to my email list about this topic. I promised I'd send them something. So if you go to my website and you sign up for any of my stuff, you'll be on my email list as well. I actually do periscopes more than I do emails. So it's late here. I think that's the best time to talk about this kind of stuff. Hmm. See, Chris, are you suggesting like a late night love talk? <laughs> Thank you for that, Rob. I appreciate that. It was only five people watching. I, maybe I need to title it differently. The truth is I'm more about content than quantity. So... You're welcome, you're welcome, Iris. I appreciate it. And thank you, Crystal, for that too. <laughs> you're better than watching teens drink beer. That isn't much of a promo. I'm sorry, Robert. <laughs> better than watching teens drink beer. <laughs> that is funny. I'm thinking, that isn't that much fun. So I'm like, how much better is this? Not much. All right, I'm going to sign off. That's getting silly. Thank you, ladies and gents, for watching. Thanks for, for asking the questions. And hopefully, thank you for taking this into your life. I'll be back again tomorrow in my scope. Probably later on today, certainly later on, earlier on tomorrow. Yes, earlier in the day tomorrow, Monday. I'll be back on again. You're welcome. Glad I could help. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for asking questions. And thanks for keeping me on track to provide useful information. And I'll be back on again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Have a great evening. Take care and take care of yourselves during the week. One thing I recommend always is love yourself today more than you love yourself before. Something like that. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay? Take care. Bye.